So in light of all of the action in the stock market with regard to Tesla recently, I was asked yesterday if I still see $700 as my stock estimate by the end of 2024. And uh, the answer is almost certainly yes. Now the robotaxi will be announced in August, 8-8, eight, eight. keep that date in mind. So it's important to remember my reasoning. It has nothing to do with 2024 sales, zero to do with what happens in 2024 with regard to unit sales. However, we'll talk about that in a second. By the end of 2024, investors will be looking at 2025 sales and profits and beyond. And I believe that those sales will, will include Cybertruck at 250,000 or more, It'll include a rebound, a, a bounce, maybe even the bounce starts this year. Again, we'll talk about that in a second. We'll see increasing numbers of threes and whys in the Midwest with much and much more clarity on the thirty, the twenty-five thousand, <clears throat> the twenty-five thousand dollar <laughs> car. <laughs> so, um, you know, if we see that the twenty-five thousand dollar car is part of the package and it's going to be starting to roll out in in uh, twenty twenty-five, that'll be part of the of the whole story. There will likely be a Juniper version of the Model Y that will impact prices. FSD and potential monetary value of cars with FSD, that'll drive car sales. So in other words, what I'm looking at is a general increase in car sales in 2025 that'll have to do with FSD. It'll have to do with robotaxi, but it'll have to do with other things as well. And people will be able to see that in 2025, the company is going to be doing extremely well, and 2026 is going to be bonkers. I, I could go down a list of other things that are going to happen in 2025, like semi-truck and like dojo, and you know we can go down the list, but those are the main things I'm thinking about when I come up with my $700 value. Energy, obviously, will be a big one. And also keep in mind that there's other marketing levers that Tesla is going to probably be pulling this year. I saw a headline this morning, didn't have a chance to get into it too much. I think I saw where the lease value, or a, there's a lease offering out right now on Model Y at $299. So you can play around with those lease numbers a lot. You can start offering a buyout at the end of the lease. Um, and you could buy down interest rates uh, as they've done in China. Last year they did in Spain. They could do that in the United States, uh, you know, as a way. I would love to see a 2%, uh, you know, loan rate that Tesla would buy down that interest rate. Um, so 4680 will maybe be uh, making a big play at, by that point. So all those kind of things are going to be happening. I've been talking about 2026 as being the big year for Tesla when everything comes together. And what I'm suggesting to you is that by the end of 2024, those things are going to be obvious as they ramp towards 2026 in 2025. But most of all, there will be RoboTaxi and Optimus on top of that, which means the price of the stock could be a lot higher than $700 by the end of the year. Depending on just how close we are to actual revenues on those two will determine how much FOMO is entering into the picture. That could be a lot, but even if it's just a little, the clear foundations in autos, trucks, energy, and all those other categories we just talked about will be enough to get us to 700 and add on top of that for robo-taxis and possibly DOMO could be kind of a big deal that nobody I don't think is really considering in their numbers. So this is Randy Kirk. If you like what we do on this channel, please hit the like button. It just really helps. I know I don't even do it all the time, but if you could help me out, I, I know I should really do it. Don't you think <laughs> for, for videos that I like anyway, and then hit subscribe and notify. We've got uh, Scott Walter later today, as always on Wednesday, Jeff Lutz coming Wednesday night. Um, and, uh, you know, it's gonna, it's, it's a great lineup. Uh, I think you guys appreciate these got these, I, I think I have outstanding guests. I really, I really appreciate these guys coming on and do what they do. Um, also, if you have a, you know, a, a thought that you might want to do this now that your taxes are out of the way, uh, jump on down and hit that Patreon little link down there. It takes you over to Patreon. You can sign right up. All right. Let's look at, uh, Micro to macro this morning is saying a massive drop in Tesla Model Y U.S. inventories with a couple of big eyeballs. 
Um, wow. Okay, that's interesting. Tesla has uh, filed a proxy today with shareholders to ask them to vote. What? Okay, there's going to be a couple of things on this proxy. Uh, June 23rd, I think, is that meeting. It's down here someplace. Maybe it's in the, I thought it was in the article. I'll see if we come up with this anyway. There's two main things that are going to be on this uh, proxy vote with when the board meets uh, in June. And one of those is going to be the moving of the incorporation out of Delaware to Texas. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I know I'm, I'm teasing you here. And the other is going to be, they're just going to basically throw Elon Musk's compensation pa pay, uh, package back on the table and vote for it exactly as it was. Now, we spent a lot of time on that compensation package on this channel, and I'm kind of so shocked and surprised that it's going to be exactly the same because there were all kinds of tax considerations for both the company and for Elon, and I don't know. So I'm sure this will be uh, talked about over the next couple of days. One of the big questions is going to be, you know, what will the shareholders do? That's already been talked about on X. And some are saying that it will be a vote of confidence uh, or not for Elon. Uh, I think that's nonsense. I think it'll be a vote with regard to whether or not the compensation package makes sense. Um, anyway, the automaker released the proxy statement to shareholders in preparation for his upcoming 2024 shareholders meeting in June and the two main issues on the agenda, da, da, da. Tesla's chairwoman, Robin Denholm, wrote the opening. She says, the Tornetta court, that was the judge, decided years later that the CEO pay package was not entirely fair to the very same stockholders who voted to approve it, even though approximately 73% of all votes, votes cast by our disinterested stockholders voted to approve it in 2018. Because of the Delaware Code's second-guessed year decision, Elon has not been paid for any of his work for Tesla for the past six years, it has helped to generate significant growth and stockholder value. That strikes us, meaning the board, and many stockholders from whom we've already heard as fundamentally unfair and inconsistent with the will of the stockholders who voted for it. So at the meeting, shareholders will be asked uh, to vote on the re-election of Kimball Ms. Musk, Elon's brother, and James Burdock, former 21st Century Fox CEO, onto Tesla's board. All right. Uh, Tesla has also, in other news, Tesla has also revealed an upcoming big new in-car software update. I think this is Tesla Roddy. Uh, uh, yeah, or it might have been, I think it was Tesla Roddy. I didn't write it. I'm sorry, I didn't note it here. Um, so here's some of the things that are coming. A new and updated user interface. I understand it is gorgeous. I, I've heard people talking about it. I haven't seen the picture yet. It will have an auto shift beta a native Audible, uh, Audible, that's the, uh, you know, the, the books on uh, that you listen to, okay, uh, from, from Amazon, updated Spotify app, and more. The software update sounds like the one we generally get as an end of the year holiday update. You know, that's that big. It's not available just yet. Tesla says it'll be coming in the spring. First off, the Tesla update is expected to bring UI, a new UI to Model 3 and model vehicles with AMD chips, which are cars produced since 2022. Tesla notes the main visual changes, immersive full screen controls when parked, large playback controls and quick access to recents, favorites and up next in the media player, expandable autopilot driving visual visualizations with a smaller map in the top right for trip guidance. You can also see the new vehicle controls graphic dead center, the new smaller map at the top right, and the new navigation card at the bottom right. The second big update is an auto shift beta, which is coming to refresh Model S and Model X dated 2021 and later. Okay, uh, Tesla is also bringing new and updated native apps to its vehicles. It will release in the upcoming update, Tesla says that it will release a native audible app Audible's Amazon's auto, audiobook. Tesla's existing native Spotify app is also getting an update. Cues across vehicles and devices and adjustable playback speed are now available. Tesla also says it will bring a new feature called hands-free trunk to the Model S and X 2021 and later, as well as the upgraded Model 3. If you stand still behind your trunk with your phone key, the truck will open on its own. I don't know if I like that. I don't, I don't think I want that. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, sentry mode vehicles will be uh, reviewable from notifications. Automaker also said they'll be able to increase regenerative braking on highways for 
only for the SNX. Okay. Um, so Tesla writes this this morning. Tesla says that it will save, oh, this is a, also in this package, will save parents the need to answer a few are you there yet questions with the capability for our rear passengers to see current trip details, time and temperature at the time of the rear touchscreen for those that have it. Uh, da -da. All right, so also this morning, Kathy Wood and her ARK Invest Funds purchased 20,683 shares of Tesla on Tuesday. Um, Wood has been beefing up her shares. Wood's Tesla trades, tra uh, sh trades were done through ARK Innovation ETF. That's the ARKK, uh, ARK Next Generation, ARKW, and it's ARK Autonomous. So as of April 17th, Tesla sits first in ARK K and ARK Q with 9.8 and 10.0 weight, respectively. Meanwhile, Tesla stock is the fifth ranked holding in ARK W with a 6.92 weight. So she, so Kathy is ready and for the robot taxi to come out. We know that that's the number one reason she's buying. <laughs> okay, I have one, exactly, analyst who agrees with me. This is from Business Insider this morning. Continued strength in the U.S. economy supports a no landing scenario, but this does not mean that the stock market will dodge a 10% correction, according to market veteran, you've all heard of him, Ed Yardini. Yardini said in a note on Monday that even after a strong retail sales report, the S&P 500 is at risk of testing its 200-day moving average at around 4,700 over the next few months. That would be a classic 10% correction, Yardini said observing that rising bond yields with the 10-year treasury hitting the highest level of the year on Tuesday at 4.69 and tickling 5% for a minute are starting to weigh on stock prices. That can be seen in the percentage of S&P 500 stocks that are trading above their 500-day moving average, which fell from the overbought level of about 80% last month to about 30% today. We are increasingly convinced that the S&P 500 made a short-term top on March 29 at 5254 it is down 3.7 since then to 56 5061 dropping below its 50 day moving average the market was overbought and may now be moving towards being oversold but a healthy correction of the stock market should not discount the continued strength of the US economy he says Following the strong March retail sales data, which was more than double economist expectations, Yardini observed that the Federal Reserve's first quarter GDP growth estimate was upgraded to 2.8 from a prior 2.4, and the Fed has boosted its GDP growth estimate to 2.9. Recognize that the Fed's growth uh, GDP estimates are generally hogwash, useless. Not very good. Anyway, his, he finally says the U.S. economy is still flying high. That's because consumers didn't get the recession memo. They keep spending because real disposable income is rising. More Americans are retiring, and they have the means to do so comfortably. Six million or more newcomers are consuming here rather than south of the border. Those would be newcomers. Newcomers. Oh, I guess he's talking about illegal immigrants. Anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that is going to also be, I don't, I'm not sure that these uh, 7 million uh, new immigrants are a net positive for the U.S. economy uh, during their first three years, you know, up to three years of living in the country uh, could be a net negative. I, I think that would be a hard call. I think you could probably, <laughs> as we say, uh, statisticians could probably make whatever they want of that. I think it, it's, it's a very close call. So um, I have been saying, I think we are probably due for a 10% correction. We've been very close to a 10% correction already on the Dow. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, close to a 5% correction on the Dow. Uh, I think we could go 10% on the S&P. Uh, but, you know, I'm not saying that's, it's not exactly, uh, I'm not exactly making a forecast as much as I'm saying it's a very, real possibility has a let's say more than 50 50 chance of happening um also i'm getting a little nervous about my 100 percent no recession this year only because i'm starting to hear little tiny negative things about employment um, i'll keep you updated as i hear more but uh it's starting to sound like the employment picture is softening more than expected um, other people might follow Elon on his big cut uh, as they did last year. 
it, it kind of emboldens some of these other companies, some of the other tech companies might be emboldened to take a look at their, uh, when was the last time they took their five or 10% cut just because. So anyway, uh, stay tuned for that. Remember, recessions can sometimes happen rapidly and out of nowhere. We're seeing that inversion close up. Um, uh, so just a few things to think about. All right, where are markets now? Starting with Tesla. Tesla is down $1.55. I'm thinking there's a, and, and that's in a generally up market this morning. I think this down move might not be a vote of no confidence for Elon, but I do think it is the news about the compensation package. Gary Black would have us believe that the compensation package news would be a positive. I'm saying that right now it is technically dilutive since the courts removed his positioning his position that actually increased the number of anyway it was the opposite of dilutive so putting it back on the table would be dilutive so stock so tesla's down 187 this morning um and you've got the dow up 172 the nasdaq up 22 s p up 15 again the dow being up a lot is reflective of the fact that it was also down more, way more than the nasdaq and the s p so it is recovering some of that you've got the magnificent seven mixed with nvidia down strongly five dollars and 35 cents meta down app uh apple barely up so it's kind of a mixed bag with the uh, Magnificent Seven, and you've got a mixed bag, but mostly up on the Kathy Wood stocks, although narrowly, very like three cents, two cents, 29 cents. So uh, not a lot of directionality right now on the tech stocks and the Kathy Wood stocks, uh, but with Tesla continuing to be. So the percentages as usual, uh, Dow Jones is up 0.47, NASDAQ up 0.20, S&P up 0.34. Let's go ahead and jump, uh, take a look at those bonds. We've got the bonds um, down point, I'm sorry, 4.1 basis points this morning, back down to 4.635. I'm sorry, it just changed. It changed radically while I was watching it. Down 2.2 basis points to 4.635. You've got the two-year only down 0.4. So that gives us a 3.3 on the two-year versus the 10-year. Um, not that much lower than it has been, but the two-month is only down uh, barely uh, nine-tenths of one basis point at 5.388, which is uh, seven, 70 basis points which uh, 75, 75 basis points. Again, it has been around 150 basis points for months and months, and now is about half that. Um, okay, we now go to the oils, and the oil patch right now is down 74 cents again this morning. Uh, so Brent is now at 89.21, uh, Texas Intermediate 84.62. Two, uh, four, three and a half dollar difference. No, four and a half dollar difference. So uh, that is moving up again in terms of Middle East action, but at the same time under ninety. So you could call that either way. I, I'm not sure we can call that as being about Middle East. Uh, the 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 headline would have us believe that right now they're more comfortable that nothing's going to happen with Israel and Iran. Natural gas is down another 3% this morning at 168. Gold is up a little bit this morning, uh, 2,409, up $2.10. Copper up 1.57% at $4.37. That's a little down from where from the top, though. And uh, you have got uh, Bitcoin down 291. Halves tomorrow, um, sitting at 62,511. So the having uh, doesn't seem to be benefiting the, the product right now. Um, okay, I think that's all that we have. Let's go back and look at Tesla one last time. Tesla's still down this morning, now down 263. So taking a pretty good hit. No other news this morning other than this uh, compensation package, package and the move out of Delaware. Um, uh, general softness because of the, uh, of the kind of 
all this news in the beginning of the week, although in my opinion, it's positive. Uh, Kathy buying, um, I, I guess you could call this a real buying opportunity, uh, but there you go. That is where we are this morning. Please uh, remember to check in later today. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, the Tesla, I'm sorry, the Elon Musk X post show is doing very, very well, getting lots and lots of views. Um, and basically, it would take you an hour to get this information. That's assuming you're on X and you really like digging. I've had to really learn how to dig, 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 dig to get all of Elon's commentary, whether he's just putting up an exclamation point in agreement with something or uh, whether he is actually making a post. Uh, but I pull all that together, take about 15, you know, generally running about 15 minutes to see everything that Elon Musk is talking about on any given day getting a little bit inside the mind of Elon. So that is generally going to be up around between 10 and 2 each day. Uh, then, of course, we got uh, Brian. W I'm sorry. Today is uh, <laughs> today is Scott Walter Day and then Jeff Lutz this evening. Um, so looking forward to seeing you a few more times later in the day. And it has been great. Oh, Brian White yesterday, one of the I think it might have hit 10,000 views yesterday. Huge successful video. If you didn't see that one yet. There is the card. Now it's time to say adieu. It's been great talking to you.